morning, everyone. It is currently around six o'clock. A uh, beautiful evening here in in Ottawa. Uh, so I'm out for. I think today's objective is really just exploring a local woodland. Now, quite simply, uh, well, there's there's really two reasons why I'm not doing this. Is one obviously just the pure health benefit of getting out and. Uh, and exploring things and and enjoying nature, which thankfully where I live in Ottawa, we have uh, the green belt, which is various areas of, of primarily woodland, woodland, woodland. Um, so you kind of kind of see here. Uh, we have other areas, but uh, no majestic mountains or whatnot. So that really leads into the second reason why I'm out here today. I can't remember if I've mentioned this before, but I'm supposed to go to Scotland this fall. Now, you might be asking yourself, what does Scotland and Woodland have in common? Well, let me tell you. There is a UK-based photographer by the name of Simon Baxter. I will link you to his channel right now. So, somewhere. Uh, so he he uh his expertise is in woodland photography and he goes to all the way permanently well in the uk and uh so basically i've signed up for one of his workshops uh for two you know to basically one to learn from a master of woodland photography and second of all to use it as a jumping off point to explore other areas um, such in the high, in the highlands of Scotland. So actually it's where we're actually going anyways for the uh, the workshop is in Scotland. So yeah, so I figured I don't know whether or not that will that trip will actually happen given that everything that's going on here in 2020 with the virus. Um, so I figured I might as well get out and try to work on my um, expertise in woodland photography or develop my skills I should say woodland photography I'm not sure if you can see them but the bugs are out now I did uh, basically soak myself in bug spray before coming out here uh, so hopefully I don't get eaten alive like my last uh, outing so the Sun is um, setting in that well, the sun is over there, so the light's coming this way. So there's there's some cloud cover, so the sun's coming in and out of that cloud cover. Um, so sometimes there's better light than others, other moments. So this is a challenge for me, right? Like, so being inside the woodland, uh, finding a composition, it's really about following the light and trying to see the light. So that's, that's, that's my objective right now is kind of find the light and a composition around that light that I like. So the exploration continues. So it actually will probably surprise you that here in Ottawa, we actually have a real sand dunes. No, and this isn't just some place where we got a bunch of uh, play sand and dumped it here. This is legit original historic uh, sand dune. And they're actually working on preserving it, which is why they have it uh, most of it blocked off. So they're really trying to preserve it, keep the forest from encroaching in on it. Uh, so I did take some shots, not of the sand dunes, because unlike uh, Death Valley National Park, where they have a full-blown, actually they have a few areas, but full-blown sand dunes. So you can check out uh, uh, my favorite uh, video of mesquite sand dunes here. Uh, but as you saw from the drone footage, now the sun really just came out from behind the clouds, so sorry about this. Uh, but these trees here are uh, had some really nice soft light, so I just pulled up my camera, handheld, uh, the 24 to 105, kind of wandered a little close. And actually, what I want to do is see if I can find some different vantage points to really shoot them from. So I can obviously get right up to them. So that's an option. But another option is uh, checking them out further and putting on the, the long lens. 
So that's what we're gonna do now. So I thought I was gonna use my Sony 100 to 400 here and capture the trees in the background. But the problem I have is actually the sand dune, which isn't very majestic here. Uh, it's cool, but not very majestic, at least with the light that's sitting in at the moment. So that I really can't get a really good clean shot across. At least I don't think I can for what I'd be looking for. So I'm gonna wander around and see if I can find a different vantage point. I've come up uh, to where I was shooting the trees. I've actually come into the forest area, not much. Uh, you can kind of see, hopefully the sun doesn't completely blow it out. Just up there is where the sand dunes are. So I just wandered in, there's a bit of a trail here. Now, what I like is the symmetry of these trees kind of coming down the path. It frames it really nice. And then you've got a little bit of greenery at the, uh, not the end of the trail, but just where the trail goes. It kind of, nice little finishing spot. Now, the sun is, uh, is a little harsh at the moment because it's, it's uh, right there blinding me. So excuse me as I turn a little so I can see. Uh, so I think it's still a little harsh at the moment. So I'm going to double back because it's right in, uh, clouds are no longer blocking it at all. So I'll come back in a little bit, see if I can get a little more softer, a little more diffuse light in the spot. Now what's absolutely amazing, and, if, and of course we all know this, right? So I've, I've walked in, I don't know, 30, 40 feet, whatever it is. Uh, kind of looks spooky. Uh, so the light is now completely diffused here. Now, I do want the light further diffused, so while it's the sun is still kind of somewhat high in the sky, at least as we approach sunset, I'm going to go in and uh, explore this area. But it's amazing how much softer the light has just gotten by just coming in the short distance that I have into uh, the forest. Now, which does make a woodland photography... Uh, challenging, especially this type of, of woods, right? It's um, heavily wooded. There's a lot of trees, uh, so not a lot of sun gets in. You do get the uh, little bit, now that's from the trail. But let me show you here. Somewhat hard to see, but you can kind of see just in this area here, some light is kind of coming in through, uh, including on uh, that tree there. But for the most part, it's a uh, very subtle light hitting the rest of the scene. Now, shooting woodland photography, at least for me, I think for most uh, woodland photographers, is trying to see through the chaos. Uh, it's very beautiful when you're here walking through, but it doesn't necessarily photograph too well. Um, now, maybe if there's some atmosphere in terms of mist, um, it, it might help. But right now, the conditions don't really provide that. So one of the things I've heard Simon Baxter sort of mentioned earlier, uh, he's a woodland photographer from the UK. He talks about trying to find relationships in the trees, which is like, what? Yeah, it, it's, it sounds a little crazy, except when, and, and I will link you to one of his videos where he talks about this, because this is definitely not my area of expertise. Uh, I'm out here trying to practice and develop this skill of, of woodland photography. But he talks about relationships with the trees. And when he explains it when he's talking about his photos, like, I can see that. So that's, that's kind of what I'm trying to find here. Now, for me, the trees, and I've, I've grown up in this area, and the trees look really like everyday trees. So it's really, really hard to find those things. So I'm going to see if I can find those relationships or at least something, some areas with character and see if those speak to me. But anyways, it's really fun to go out and kind of challenge myself and see if I can improve this skill and help develop it. Um, Cause you know, I have a lot of woodlands uh, in the area. So let's go explore. So this isn't exactly an example of a relationship. What an example is, is really trying to walk around and see if you can find something. And I do have this challenge when I'm on a hike and through the woods because I like to I like to book it and go fast. So to slow down is a challenge. But I found these these interesting trees. Uh, you can kind of see go up here. But what I like 
is all of this, right? The knots and the wood. Um, so you got a number of trees like that here, but you also got this other one that's much, much darker in the, in the background, which really stands out. So what I'm doing is I'm walking around, obviously just with my iPhone here at the moment, seeing if there's something there. There might be, right? So this is, and like if I take it here, that dark tree in the back disappears, but if I move just a foot this way, so there might be something. There might be. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna play around here, I think. I think this is where I'll set up shop until I go back. So I was playing around a little bit with, with that area. I, I took some photos, uh, handheld. Uh, you know, I should have put the tripod on, but really what I was doing was with the, my camera, that's a Sony A7R III and had my 24 to 105 on. I, I was I was moving around, trying to find a composition, took a few different photos. I even changed the aperture. Now that lens can only go, give me depth of field as low as F4. But what I'll do is quickly show you two different photos. Uh, one that's at F8 and one there I got really close to the tree and shot at F4. It really gives you an idea of, of what you could do there. Now, these two photos are definitely not award-winning, nor even portfolio-worthy photos, but I wanted to share these two with you. The one here on the left is actually shot at F8, and you'll notice that the tree trunk is pretty much all in focus, but even given my proximity and how close I was to the tree, the background uh, falls out of focus. Now, this particular lens is my Sony 24-105, it can only go as low as f4 which is what the photograph on the right is shot at and you'll notice that even on the left hand side of the tree trunk the it starts to go out of focus um, as well as a better out of focus background so once again not two uh, images that will make my portfolio but i did want to share these with you to give you an idea of potential compositions and just what that particular scene uh, would photograph like in that light. Potentially if there was some better light um, hitting uh, those uh, trees, it might have provided a little more interesting subject. But anyways, let's move on. I've got a while before sunset before I go back to try to get a couple of the photos back there. So we'll, we'll see if I come upon anything else, but at the very least I'll uh, enjoy this nice little hike. While I've been waiting for the sun to get a little softer in this area, uh, I just, over here on the left-hand side now, this doesn't look like much, just given the, the lighting. But just actually a few moments ago, it was a little softer. And there's some little nice bit of light on this, this tree here. And what caught my eye, obviously, was the texture and the color of the bark on this tree. So what I basically did, I had my 24 to 105 on, and as you'll see here is, is basically, I was really focusing primarily on the tree. I actually stopped down at F4, kind of let the, the foliage and the background go, go out of focus because that wasn't the main um, part of the photo. So a bit more of an abstract photo. Uh, I did a, mainly portraits, but some landscapes. And then I did as well, because it was darker, is, is there's a little bit of light hitting uh, some of the leaves here and over here. So I, I did uh, go out to F8 to try to get that in there. So just trying it. Uh, I don't think that's an award-winning photo, but uh, you'll uh, see those a uh, couple of those photos here right now. The first of the two photos that I'll share of this particular tree. I actually very much like this photo. It is a portrait orientation photo. Obviously the tree and the colors and the textures are very much the focal point of this uh, photograph. Now I actually do plan on going back and shooting uh, this same shot, but instead of just a portrait orientation shot, I want to shoot a vertical pano to really emphasize the tree and make it much, uh, much bigger and a much larger uh, photograph. Now this photograph I do enjoy as well, similar to the last, the colors of the bark, uh, the tree is just amazing. I do enjoy the green uh, tree leaves in the background, 
Now, the one thing in this photograph I particularly don't necessarily like is you'll notice the tree trunks in the background are just like a grayish blob almost. Now, that is actually pretty much straight out of camera. So, if I go back and shoot this scene again, I might do a focus stack or, or something a little more to at least pull out the details in the trees a little better or look to potentially just uh, have that all fall off uh, better out of focus. Anyways, either way, I still very much enjoy this photograph. The tree is absolutely amazing and it's a fairly unique tree that I have not seen uh, before in the area. The uh, sun is uh, setting here. In fact, uh, it's kind of gone behind the cloud bank there. So there's still some nice soft light. Uh, but what I'm gonna do here is just walk you through some photos I just took because the uh, light was a little nicer a few minutes ago. So I just uh, grabbed my camera and walked around. So as you can see, we're at the sand dunes area here. And this was the area that I was looking to photograph uh, as, uh, as the sun got a little, little lower in the sky. I decided to head into this wooded area well, that's pretty much all wooded area except for the sand dune behind me. With my original composition in mind, which was basically using the trail as a bit of a leading line with the symmetry on the trees on, on either side. Now, I'll show you the photo here in a moment, but, you know, I haven't seen it in Lightroom. I haven't had a chance to really look at it, but... What you'll see here as I spin around, on this side, you'll see the, uh, the greenery here, which I, th I think is some new growth uh, trees, but I'm not too sure. But on this other side, going down, it is not pronounced coming out into the trail. So it's a little bit unbalanced. So, so in my mind, it's, 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 it's a little off, but we'll see. I, I, I did try it uh, and we'll see if it works out. But, you know, experiment. Thank, thank God for digital, because if that was film, I'd be a poor man. So say we all. Now, what I like about this image here is obviously the very soft light, the moodiness in the uh, background, and just the overall feeling of the photo. Now, what I don't like is the fact that this photo does feel off balance. I should have moved in a little more to the next set of trees and framed those up a little bit. And as well, I'm not a big fan of all the sky seeing in the, in the middle top of the frame, but that's something for me to look at and improve on my next uh, time photographing in this area. Now what I did was walking back out, and this is, this is a great tip is I turned around again. So I turned around and I looked back and what I saw was this group, well, here, I get this right, this group of trees right here. Now, not the most majestic of shots, but I, I found some nice symmetry and the relationship, just a simple one is, is, is a group togetherness, right? It's, it's standing tall together. Um, so, and, and I think maybe in these times, uh, standing tall together is, is a great message. Uh, so once again, uh, just trying things out. Uh, and we'll see how things look when I get them back into to Lightroom. You'll have actually seen these photos before I have, because in the back of the screen, they don't always reflect uh, the final image. So this photograph here, it is an interesting photograph, as I was mentioning, with the symmetry of it and basically the message of standing tall together. It is something I th think I can work upon and go back and reshoot, uh, whether it's this cluster of trees or another cluster of trees. I do enjoy the, the light and the, the softness of the photo. Maybe if there's some mist or perhaps going back and taking advantage of the new growth between the two trees in the middle. We'll see, perhaps next time. So I've spent, uh, you know, better part of an hour, hour and a half exploring, a little bit of photography, 
Now, one thing to keep in mind that I need to remember is the thicker the woodland is, I, I do need to come a little earlier. So sunset around now, I think is around 8.30. I got here around six. So in the open area, you could see, you know, obviously great light. In fact, I had to wait for the light to get a little better. But inside the, uh, the forested area, not a lot of light. So there's, there's ambient light, don't get me wrong. Uh, but definitely maybe getting here around four o'clock or something in, a, in these thicker areas uh, would allow me not just time to explore, but also uh, find the light as it, as it enters the, uh, the wooded area. Now, another great tip, the weather's perfect for t-shirts, t-shirts, t-shirt and shorts, which is what I'm wearing right now. Uh, the bugs absolutely love that attire. Now I have bug spray on, but it probably would have been a much, much better idea wearing long, uh, long sleeve shirt and, uh, and some nice uh, hiking pants, especially as I go through this mudded area where there are more bugs. Now, I really hope you liked uh, exploring uh, this wooded area with me today. So if you did, I'd appreciate it if you liked the video, subscribe, be sure to hit the little bell icon, make sure you're notified when new videos of mine come in and obviously share, share would be great. So until next time, have a good night. Thank you.